All right, guys, in this episode of Living Life in Maine, we're going to talk about the winters here in Maine and can you survive them? Yes, uh, probably the top two questions my team and I get all year long, especially from people that are looking to move here from a uh, different part of the country, not so much New England, but maybe the South or the Midwest or definitely the West is how cold does it get in Maine and how much snow do we get? It's interesting that those are the top two questions because, you know, I have friends that are in the real estate industry in Florida, as an example, and never have they ever gotten a question. How many hurricanes do you have down there? Or I have a friend that actually lives in the Great Plains, and he and I were just talking the other day and laughing about how uh, he never gets a question on how many tornadoes are there every year. But for some reason, people seem to be afraid of the snow. So in this episode, we're going to talk about can you survive the main winters? We do live in the 21st century, so you definitely can survive the main winters. This is going to be a little different slant. It's not how you survive them in terms of the elements, but really what do you do in the main winters. So if this is of interest to you, grab your hot chocolate, uh, put in some warm fuzzy socks, stroke that fire because we're going to get after that right now. All right, guys, welcome to the channel here in Maine. My name is Scott Tebow. I'm, I'm a broker with eXp Realty. My team and I, we get calls, texts, emails all the time of what it's like to live in Maine. People looking to move here and uh, people looking to maybe visit here to see if they want to move here. And people that are moving here, um, the, you know, there's a lot of questions about the Northeast, specifically Maine. It's kind of like the last st stop on the train before you leave the country. And uh, the, the state is beautiful. It's picturesque. Um, and there's more and more people that are moving here. I think in 2021, if I, my memory serves me correctly, maybe it's 2022, Maine was the, mo it was the eighth most moved to state in the country. Um, but winter... And that question comes up a lot, so thought I'd address it right now. It's getting a little colder outside. It's almost December. Um, we haven't had any snow yet. We had a little. Actually, I take that back. We had. A, I woke up one morning and we had a little dusting. This was like a week or so ago. Kind of freak snowstorm. A little dusting. It was gone by lunchtime. But um, big question that comes up all the time. So I thought I'd address it now. And the purpose of this channel, guys, is really just to help you make an educated decision on why you'd want to move to Maine. It doesn't matter if you're looking to move here in nine days, 90 days, nine months, or nine years. This channel is all about helping you make decisions and being an asset to you to give you more information about living in Maine. And obviously, We'd love to help you make that smooth transition if you're thinking about doing that. So you can drop us a line, send us a text, send us an email, um, uh, leave us a comment. And don't forget to like and subscribe the button below and be the first to be updated when I drop new content. All right, guys. So we're talking about the main winters. And um, when you think about the main winters, you really, I'm going to talk about snow first. You really got to divide it up into this three sections of the state, the, according to the National Weather Service, on how they predict snow in, in Maine. You got the, you got the southern, southern Maine, you got central Maine, you got northern Maine. And the snowfalls are a little bit different in each area. So southern Maine is kind of the Portland region, Portland south. The average amount of snow, according to the statistics that I've read over the last 20 years, is we get somewhere between 3 and 5 feet of snow every year. Now, guys, 5 feet of snow is a lot of snow. That's 60 inches, I think, 12, 24, yeah, 60 inches. But we don't get it all at once. I mean, last year, I don't even know if we got 60 inches in southern Maine. Um, but if we did... It doesn't come. We did get one big snowstorm where we got like over a foot. But other than that, sometimes it's two inches. Sometimes it's three inches. Um, sometimes it's six inches. Sometimes it's a dusting here, dusting there. But I guess they add it all up. And they use it by the, they do it by the Portland jet port. Um, and on average, we get, about, we get about five feet of snow in southern Maine throughout the year. And the year can start as early. I mean, it's, it's snowed as early as uh, Halloween here. I remember when my kids were little, or it snowed in Halloween. But really, it kind of starts after Thanksgiving, and we'll go all the way to really the end of March. Generally, um, by the middle of March, is a saying up here: "In like a lion." March that is, in like a lion, out like a lamb. So you get these big snowstorms. But the two months that we get the heaviest snow 
uh, in January and February and then a little bit in March. But definitely January and February is when we get the most snow. So southern Maine, you get about three to five feet. You go to central Maine, kind of the Bangor, Augusta area, um, and that those totals go up. Those totals go from like five to eight feet. Um, there's a big impact on the coast in the Atlantic Ocean and the warmer weather, so warmer water, I should say. So that's why the snow totals stay down in southern Maine, and they go up as you go further up into the state. So again, six to eight feet, five to eight feet, central Maine, Bangor, Waterville, uh, Augusta, that area. Um, you're going to get about that amount of snow. And then northern Maine, up in Aroostook County, up way up there. Um, you're gonna get you're gonna get probably uh, the statistic I said was you're gonna you get up to 10 11 feet of snow uh, through this through the year and I know it's already snowed up there uh, already so you're gonna get a lot of snow in northern Maine actually the um, <clears throat> the most snow we've ever gotten in this state it was in northern Maine it was 180 inches so guys that's like I think that's like 15 feet of snow. Um, but it was in northern Maine. The most we've ever gotten in, um, in one time in southern Maine, I believe, was in 2013. Where we got a snowstorm and it packed us like 31 and a half inches of snow. So, guys, we haven't had snowstorms like that for like 10 years now. The climate is definitely warmer. I don't know if that's due to uh, global warming or the environment or something else. But we definitely don't get the snowstorms as much as we used to when I was a kid 10, 15. Well, I wasn't a kid 10, 15 years ago. But definitely when I was a kid back in, you know, the 70s, let's say, we used to get a lot of snow. And it was it was big. And I know that even though when you're smaller, you, everything seems bigger then than it does now. But... I only know we used to get a lot of snow because in Maine, they allocate school days. They allocate snow days in your school calendar. And generally, it was 10 snow days. So they said, all right, you're going to go to school from after Labor Day, and you're going to go to school until June 10th, let's say. And that was built in with 10 snow days. Um, there was one time we went to school, I remember this distinctly, and it was getting close to the end of June because we had so many snow days throughout the year that we had to use so um definitely more snow in the 70s and you know uh 60s 70s some of the biggest storms in maine have you know were in the 60s and the 50s they're not as big as big now i don't know that may change um it's definitely getting a little cooler right now but the snowstorms in maine aren't what they used to be so if you're thinking about how do you survive the maine and how, how do you survive in maine how do you survive the winter Guys, we live in the 21st century. It isn't like we don't have power, electricity, heat, and all that. To me, surviving the main is how do you survive the boredom? There's a big saying up here. You get cabin fever, right? What do you do in the winter when you're locked in in snowstorms? Not really locked in unless you're out in the wilderness. But um, I picked out top the top 10 things you can do in Maine in the winter. Um, and these aren't in any order, but Maine is a huge ski state um you got sugarloaf mountain and sunday river which are big resorts for skiers and snowboarders i have friends they just live for the weekends in maine in the winter believe it or not not the summer not the fall not the spring in the winter they are either skiers and snowboarders or snowmobilers so it is unlike anything you've experienced here in maine in the winter if you are in those categories of kind of skiing or uh, snowmobiling or snow sh or uh, snowboarding yeah there's great ski resorts all across all across the uh, country especially in colorado and uh, you know you hear about these out the french shops and all that and yeah those are extreme skiing but there is a ton a ton of people that ski here in maine in the winter time specifically those are two of the biggest resorts there's, there's smaller ones mount abrams um King Pine, there's a bunch of them all around. Um, in the win and in, in school, school actually has um, school actually has ski clubs where you can join a ski club and you'll go with your school skiing. So, a ton of things to do in terms of skiing in Maine. Lots of people ski. Lots of people I know live for the winters. You know, they they work four day weeks and they have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and they had them they leave right out of work on Thursday, and they're on the mountain staying there. It is kind of cool to be skiing and going into the cabin or down to the resort and having a few beverages and hanging out it's 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 a good time so number one skiing and snowboarding big thing to do in the winter time here in maine a lot of people do it 
I ski a little bit, uh, not as much. My kids snowboard. We don't go to those bigger mountains. We go to Mount Abrams. But um, good time. It definitely gets your exercises, and you know you you sleep good at night after you've been skiing all day. Uh, then there's snowboard, uh, snowshoeing, and cross country skiing. Now I love snowshoeing. Um, I haven't done it actually in a couple years, uh, so I should say I love it. But I, I got to get a new pair of snowshoes. I had the old kind of big wooden tennis racket ones, and there's definitely more modern snowshoes these days. But uh, snowshoeing, love snowshoeing. The places you can go with snowshoes that you can't go uh, any time of the year, especially in the winter time, you just got to make sure the ice is hard enough. Or if you're going to cross over a brook, a stream, or a river, but it is so picturesque, guys. It's so quiet and so beautiful, and you can, you know, if you're one with nature. And again, if you put on the right clothing and you have the right, uh, you know, gloves and and boots and hats and mittens and all that stuff, you're going to be fine. People freak out about snow in Maine, especially for those people that don't live here. And I just, I guess I just don't get the big ordeal because it is no different than if you're living in the South and you got to buy flip-flops and shorts, you want to have the right clothing, right? So it's about having the right clothing. And, you know, if you're going to go snowshoeing, it, you know, that again, great workout. You can spend all day out there snowshoeing, bring some food, see some, see some landscapes that you're not going to be able to see. Guys, I, I can't even describe to you when you see a mountain or a side of a hill and it's just untouched and it's covered in snow, it it it, it almost doesn't look real. It is so um, just when it's when it's un when it's unabated by people, um, it it is incredible to look at. So snowshoeing and then cross country skiing. A lot of the golf courses uh, around Maine, they open up their uh, they open up their grounds to snow uh, to uh, cross country skiing. That's just when you you know you get a pair of long skis and you're just kind of working out. You're not going downhill. You're just going cross country, kind of more flatter terrain. Again, another good workout. Very quiet. One with nature. Uh, there's actually clubs around. Uh, there's actually clubs around here that have. Uh, skiing clubs and there's also uh, clubs that have like cross-country skiing um, if you're not into the moguls and going downhill and stuff like that so that's another way to survive the Maine winters obviously uh, snowmobiling is a big thing in Maine when you get up kind of more central and northern and northwestern Maine they have these trails Jackman area on your way to Canada uh, they have these trails. They're like highways, guys, and there's these massive amounts of these snowmobile clubs. Again, I have friends every week. You see them posting on Facebook. You know, they go up to their, they go up to their buddy's cabin and they're snowmobiling all weekend long. Um, again, places you can go with a snowmobile that you can't go with anything else. Kind of like uh, snowshoeing. But the trails up there, you know, it's like it's like kind of to me, it's like you're in the old time Western world, old time West, you know, the the, um, the cowboy Western movies. Where, but it's snow, right? And you're pulling up to a, a tavern right off the right on the trail, right? And you're going in and having a hot toddy and obviously drinking whatever you're going to drink and get back on your snowmobile. Don't encourage that. I'm not encouraged to uh, snowmobile and drink, but I'm just saying. Um, it's a different experience if you've never done it and being snowmobiling and being able to go places on a snowmobile that most people can't go to without a snowmobile and when there's no snow is quite an experience. Um, uh, so that's uh, kind of the third thing. The fourth thing, um, snow tubing. Now this is one of the things I do do because my girls love to go snow tubing. Uh, my brother and his wife and kids come up from Connecticut and some my old last year uh, my football coach back in high school and his wife uh, were up here and we all went snow tubing in Wyndham, Maine where they have this massive uh, not massive but a pretty big mountain it's all groomed and what's really cool about that is it's an, there's an escalator going up the mountain so they put in an escalator where you just stand on it and it's belt driven and it takes you right up to the top you get on the snow tubes and you you race down and you link up with other you know other people in your party and you snow tube down the down the hill it's pretty fun uh you do that for about two or three hours and you're going to be pretty tight even though you don't have to walk back up the mountain snow tubing is a lot of fun after you go snow tubing you know you go get something to eat uh, but again good exercise good way to stay in shape uh even though you're on a tube you're still getting up you're walking around 
you're getting exercise, you're getting out of the house, you're breaking that cabin fever. So snow tubing is another awesome thing to do in Maine in the wintertime. I highly encourage it. Um, then there's ice fishing. And I've spoken about this before. Lots of people ice fish in Maine. I don't know if it's more because they like the fishing or they like the camaraderie of fishing. If you drive by some of the bigger lakes, Sebago or Moosehead or whatever, you're going to see all these ton, uh, ton of all these uh, ice little shacks, right? So people have ice shacks. They pull them out with the snowmobiles or they pull them out on a sled, put some holes in the ice, put drop the flags, and they catch all kinds of fish. But honestly, I think it's more ice fishing. Is I think more about hanging out with your buddies on the ice on a bonfire having a few cocktails, having a few uh, shots of liquor, if you will, enjoying some of the stories, snowmobiling on the ice and catching fish on the ice, good time, lots of fun. Again, one with nature, fresh air. You know, I read the story of uh, Maine in the winters and how people like from Boston and other parts of the country hate the winters, but Maine is different even though we have kind of more drastic winters than a lot of the other parts of the country other than like you know North Dakota or way up north in the west um, it's just a different way that Maine treats it Maine people treat it because we do do a lot of activities where people like in Boston or maybe out west they complain all the time because they don't do as much so ice fishing is another one of those things that's pretty cool uh, I've done it a bunch of times it is a bunch of fun uh, I've spent weekends ice fishing kind of you get into that groove and it's like you're looking forward just to being outside especially if you back in the day before I got into real estate I was uh, in uh, technology and when you're sitting around all day either in meetings or working on proposals or working on different technology solutions you know, you got to get up and move around. So ice fishing pretty, was pretty fun for me. So was in snowmobiling. So was in skiing, the snow, uh, snowshoeing. Uh, I don't snowboard too tough on my knees, but pretty good time. All right, so those are kind of like the four or five things that you do for activities in terms of getting your heart rate up and getting some exercise. Now, there's a bunch of things that you can do that, you know, if, you, if you're not quite as, uh, you, don't, you don't want to be quite as active. The Maine Lighthouse Tours is a pretty picturesque thing to do in Maine in the winter. The snow-driven lighthouse scenes all over the rocks and the cliffs and the different snow, uh, different lighthouses and the, the way they're covered is really, really pretty. Um, and you probably can't do it in a day because there's quite a few lighthouses that you can see up and down the up and down the coast of Maine that's a weekend thing so definitely um, seeing lighthouses is one of those activities that you want to do so yeah lighthouse visits definitely something I would encourage everybody to do uh, it doesn't matter if you've done it once or 20 times it's 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 something that every time you go there it's a different scene especially in the winter um, so something you can do in the winter, lighthouse, lighthouse uh, visits. Um, throughout the state, a lot of towns have winter festivals. I know right here in Biddeford we have a winter festival at the beginning of February where a lot of locals come out. We actually build, the city of Biddeford builds a uh, snow tubing ramp right in the main street. They bring in all the snow, they pack it all down, they start about on a Monday for it to start on a Saturday, the uh, the winter fest but it's a big thing they have activities around and who can go the fastest who can go the farthest um but then you got all the breweries and stuff around that and all the different things you can do in the snow from uh in in winter fest from obviously the breweries to snow uh to snowshoeing to snowmobiling to uh sliding to they have some of these other uh, places that i've been you know they they make snowballs and you throw them and try to knock bottles down and uh there's just all kinds of things and all the eats all the things all the different types of foods there are um so there's a lot of towns that do what we call winter fest or winter fest activities uh to celebrate winter another great activity to do in maine in the winter uh is winter fest um i got a little cheat sheet here now, this one is going to be a little chillier than most people probably are accustomed to, but there are a couple spots where you can go whale watching in the winter, and it's it's pretty unique. Um, it's cold. I'm not going to deny that. It's cold. And this is coming from a maniac, a true Mainer. 
you go whale watching in the middle of winter, it's cold out on the ocean. Um, but the captains and the charters, they know what they're doing. Uh, you go in a big enough boat, there's, heat, there's heated places inside. But you go out 10, 12 miles out, uh, obviously, uh, out in the main. And, and there's two things about whale watching in Maine. Um, when you're out 10 to 12 miles and you look back at the coast, holy smokes, guys. It's like, I can't even describe. Uh, it's probably out of like... Uh, some type of ice movie but it's like uh it's pretty it's pretty breathtaking bring your camera if you go ever go well watching in a winter in maine because turn around and look back at the coast of maine with all the snow and all the little towns uh depends where you if you're leaving out of kennebunk port or portland or even up in uh, bar harbor um the views are stunning i mean the views are stunning all the year around in maine but if you go if you go in the winter time out into the ocean and you go well watching not only are you going to see some pretty cool whales, but uh, you're gonna you're gonna see some picturesque uh, scenes if you're looking back. And you know, I don't know how many of you guys watched the game or have watched the Game of Thrones, and they have this one colony called Winterfest or Winterland or Winterfall or whatever it is. And you know, a lot of people think of Maine like that's that's how it is, and it isn't. That is not how it is. Do we get a lot of snow? Yeah, but. Um, do we get cold temperatures? Yes, but again, it's what you make it. Um, so, whale watching. Towards the end of winter, you have Maine maple season. Um, that's late winter, early spring. Sometimes there's still snow on the ground, and there's a lot of sugar houses. So you have a lot of people that tap trees and get the get the sap from the trees, and they boil it down, and they create syrup. And that's a big thing. Uh, you can hang out these sugar, 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 I can't even speak sugar, shacks. And, uh, you know, they make different beverages out of these syrup, too. From uh, Not just syrup for pancakes and French toast, but you can do a lot with with uh, the main sugar uh, shacks and the places to see and the things to do like that. And then, of course, is uh, you got a lot of Airbnbs in the wintertime. A lot of people come here to go skiing, and there's Airbnbs, so sitting around the fire. Going to the beach in the winter is pretty awesome too it's so scenic and quiet and you still have the waves in the ocean uh, but the beaches are pretty much uh, empty i think i've talked about this ad nauseum with my dog my dog loves running on the beach in the winter time um it's just you know you got the whole beach to yourself you see the seagulls cool thing in southern maine and i think it's more in february and i don't want to give away my spot but you get a lot of sand dollars that wash up on the beach in maine in february time frame so um i have a place that i can go and uh you know there's sand dollars all over the place so there's a lot of people just shops around especially in the kennebunkport area that have a lot of uh, sea sh uh, ocean shops, sea glass shops, um, shops that have gone from, you know, with sand, doll sand dollars and starfish. These are um, different colored rocks and stuff like that. Um, definitely you're gonna see some things wash up uh, in the winter time and you might ha be able to get, get it without other people because again, the beaches are very empty um <clears throat> you know there's not a lot of people frolicking out there so um definitely going on the beach but uh relaxing on a cozy cabin b airbnb uh obviously there's all kinds of eateries and food places i you know i've talked about that that's all year round but to survive the main winter you just got to get out of the house you just got to enjoy being outdoors you can just go for a walk you can just go sco uh, snowmobiling or or if you don't have a snowmobile or you don't have a snowmobile, if you don't have snowshoes, you know, or ski, you can just, again, there's so many things you can do. Go for a walk. Um, go to one of these Winterfests. Go to Lighthouse Tours. Go to L.L. Beans and go for a tour. Go to Cabela's. Go down to Kittery Trading Post where you have all these outdoor shops. Um, pick a pick a point on the map and travel to and bring a camera. There's no shortage of things you can photo uh, you can uh, take pictures of and have your photography updated you know go on the lighthouse tours if you're not going to do any of those activities but guys there are so many things to do here in the winter me uh for me in the winter i i, I play in a poker league uh so <laughs> i do that every uh other week every other friday we do that all winter so that's kind of my guys night out outside of that my wife and i are always doing something on the weekends 
Um, of course, you do have activity around the house. Like when we do get a lot of snow, you gotta you gotta you gotta get the old snow thrower out there and get rid of the snow and shovel and all that stuff. But um, you can survive Maine winters pretty easily, guys. In terms of temperature, the average temperature in Maine, again, three different sections of the country, uh, three different sections of the state, the average temperature in the southern part of uh, Maine, the highs are probably in the uh, mid to high 20s, low 30s during the day, and kind of down in the 20s, high teens at night. Um, in in central Maine, it's everything goes down about 10 degrees, so you got, you got kind of the the teens to low twenties in the uh, daytime, and probably the low teens to around zero at night. And then in northern Maine, you got the teens during the day, and oftentimes below zero at night. Um, so again, you got Portland, southern Maine, Bangor, Waterville, Augusta, central Maine. And then up in the county, Caribou, Holton, Fort Kent, uh, way up there in northern Maine is where it really gets chilly and you really get a lot of snow. So a lot of people live up there. A lot of people love it. Um, you know, there's so many things, again, you can do in the wintertime. But don't be afraid of Maine, guys, if you're worried about the snow or the cold. It's not a big deal. Um, as we get deeper into the season, I'll post a video on how to prepare what to do in the snow in terms of driving and preparing your house and things you need to have when you go outdoors especially if you're going to work or whatever uh in the winter time um, especially after a snowstorm driving's a big thing because just as an example uh, when i was learning to drive you know i i was coming into this uh i was coming into this road to turn left and it was snowy and I hit my brakes and I just slid and slid and slid and it's a natural reaction just to hold on to your brakes but if you let go of your brakes if you know as long as you're not going too fast your tires grip and then you can turn but a lot of people just hang on to their brakes and they slide right into stuff um, that really only happens when it's when the when the plows haven't gone out and got the snow off the roads but in Maine there's a big, it's a big ordeal in a lot of cities and a lot of municipalities. They get this stuff down packed in terms of keeping the roads clean and stuff. Um, obviously, if you get these big, massive nor'easters where it's snowing a foot to a foot and a half, it's hard for them to keep up. So there's winter warnings and advisors and stay off the roads as this plows try to keep it clear. Um, and then, you know, the other thing you got to worry about in the wintertime when you're driving is the snow banks because as they get built up, not as much in southern Maine, but definitely in central and northern Maine, you can't see around corners and stuff. So you really got to be taking it slow and be able to see around you um, because sometimes the snow bankings are higher than your cars. But, you know, I can't tell you how many times, uh, especially as a kid, some of these snow banks, we used to play uh, King of the Mountain when I, was in, when I was in grade school. They don't allow you to do that anymore, but it was awesome because, you know, the, the school would plow their parking lots and you have these massive mountains of snow. And then, you know, it's like being on a mountain, but of snow and, it's, you know, 10, 12, 15 feet high, you'd find your way to climb up it and King of the Mountain, right? Who can stay on the mountain the longest? They don't allow any of that stuff today. I don't know why, but I think this country's becoming so soft. These They don't build the kids the way they used to, but I'm ranting now, so I'll, I'll go on this. Guys, you can survive Maine winters, no problem. The snow isn't a big deal. Do we get snow? Yes. Is it colder? Yes. The average temperature in southern Maine is right around freezing during the daytime. 10 degrees less if you go to central Maine, 10 degrees less if you go to northern Maine. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, I didn't throw this out there, but you know what some people do? And it's actually very good for your body, and that is cold water immersion. You know, they do that a lot in Iceland where they jump into these cold water holes and then they go into natural springs. But cold water immersion is really good for your um, your cardiovascular system and your circulatory system. So look it up. But if you want to really be brave, you can join the, uh, you can join the uh, lobster club. Or the polar bear club where we jump in the ocean beginning of January and they call it the lobster club because you come out and you're all red uh, because you got cold water on you and it's cold out. Or the main polar bear club where they cut a piece of a big uh, chunk of a uh, big circle of out of the ice and the lakes and you jump in there and they pull you out. But uh, guys, I hope this was helpful. I know I ranted a little bit on this. Um, 
Again, my name is Scott Tebow. I'm with EXP Realty. I'm a broker here in Maine, and the whole purpose of this channel is just to help you get educated on what it's like to live in Maine. Do you want to live here? And if you do, do you want to move here? And if you do, um, we're here to help you. Uh, we have a lot of clients that have moved from other parts of the country to Maine. Um, we often spend time with them, Zoom calls, showing them properties as us being their eyes and ears. Uh, through FaceTime or we take videos and then send them back to them. Sometimes they make offers from away. We submit the offers, get the house under contract, get the house sold, do a remote closing, um, and then they drive up, have their U-Hauls show up or their, um, a lot of people are using those pods now and their house is ready to move in. We set it all up for them, make sure that they're good to go, have utilities on and all that. So big thing uh probably 25 percent of our business is uh is uh people from away uh from different parts of the country moving to maine maine is a pretty hot destination these days a lot of people are moving here uh when i say a lot again in relevance to you know being texas or florida not that many but uh, there's definitely more people moving in the state than leaving the state uh so Definitely want to check it out, and if you've never been here, come up and visit, guys. You won't, you'll, you'll love it up here, and you might make a decision to move here one day. So, I hope this is helpful. Uh, have a great day, everybody. It's almost December. Cold weather's sitting in here, but uh, it's it's getting nice. I love the brisk mornings. Um, I actually sleep with my window open, so not all the way open, but I love the cold air when I'm sleeping. And the next week, I'm uh, next week. I'm going to give you a market update on housing and the prices of housing, specifically in Southern Maine. Maybe I'll do Southern and Central Maine, um, just to give you an idea of what uh, average house goes for in Maine and kind of what the trends are in terms of people that are moving here. All right, guys, have a great week, and I'll talk to you next week. Over and out.